welcome back. Just last week, the Senate approved the President's request to securitize their 22.7 trillion now ways and means advances provided to the federal government by the CBN, putting an end to prolonged discussions that began last year. Now, in recent years, the FG's fiscal operations have resulted in significant fiscal deficits due to underperformance in revenue, particularly in oil revenue, compared to budgeted outcomes. As a result, it has increasingly relied on ways and means financing from the CBN to cover the unfunded portion of fiscal deficit. However, this has led to the WNM balance consistently surpassing the 5% threshold of the federal government's prior year's revenue stipulated in the CBN Act. I'm now being joined by international finance and economics analyst Mukhtar Mohammed. Many thanks for joining us on the Business Insight and Plus TV, Mukhtar. Thank you, my pleasure. Okay, let us start this way. First of all, the ways and means uh, advances of the Central Bank of Nigeria to the federal government, should it not be uh, a CBN, um, strictly a CBN affair under its purview? What's the role of the DMO in all of this? Well, it, um, it's supposed to be between the CBN and the federal government. But again, when you are talking about debt, the DMO has to come in because it's a debt that the federal government has to pay. The DMO is like the regulator or the, the custodian of Nigerian debt. So they have to be the one that plans payment schedule. So uh, that's why they are, um, definitely have to be involved in it. All right. So, okay, fine. The DMO says the securitization will involve the issuance of debt securities with a 40-year tenure by the federal government to the Central Bank of Nigeria. I want you to break it down for us because over time, uh, analysts say that uh, the federal government seems to abuse the ways and means. So just break down this new development to us. Well, um, you, say, you said it all. They have abused it. In the first place, they are not supposed to go above that limit of about 30% um, of the budget deficit. They were way, way above it. And um, the CBN was supposed to bring them uh, if they were going to put above that and said that because of the because of the independence of the CBN, they said, no, we cannot give you thus far because you have, you have borrowed above your limit. The only time you are allowed to borrow above your limit is in the time of situation, maybe there's a crisis, security crisis. But um, at this time that the borrowed, the country was not in a standstill, they were not in war situation. So definitely they, they borrowed above their limit and the, the CBN could not act on its autonomy to say, no, we cannot do it. And that's uh, where we have the problem that we keep saying that, the, especially the current CBN has become a tool in the hands of the government. Now the government can no more depend on their revenue you know, we've been saying that the problem in Nigeria is not in the GDP, it's in the revenue. You can have a very low GDP, but have a, a very, uh, I mean, you can have a very high GDP to borrow more and a low, a low revenue, you cannot, um, you cannot borrow because you, it's not the GDP that pays the money, it's the revenue that pays the money. Now, they had to do that is because they just realized that the government has no money and it's a domestic debt. So what we are seeing is more or less like a debt reshuffling and saying, okay, now we are going to be paying CBM 9% of this debt every year. It now stands like a security. And so they're expecting Nigerians to buy into this product and they pay, the Nigerians will begin to benefit from it. Um, I mean, from, from, from the bond, whereby they, when they invest in that, they get 9% and the government will be, the, the CBM will be able to have, and the government will be able to have money to pay the CBM. Um, it's um, using one illegality to co correct on that illegality. Because the ways and the means are supposed to go to the National Assembly, we never had that. And now again, even if you are going to um, um, proceed to bond, you still need the approval of the National Assembly. But as it is now, it's, it's a policy that they just decided to go on with without uh, getting relevant approval. All right, uh, Mokhtar, but some analysts have pointed out that the executive and the National Assembly may have acted prematurely as Section 38 of the CBN Act prohibits securitization of the ways and means. Uh, don't you think that, uh, consequently, we might need an amendment to the Act uh, to proceed with this uh, so-called uh, securitization? I think we just uh, need an amendment in any law because uh, the whole idea of a law, a law is not 100%. And, People will always find ways and ways to, to le legitimately beat the law. And I think that is what they have succeeded in doing. They didn't just um, 
they, they look at the lapses in the law and they took advantage of it. Uh, I keep saying the problem in Nigeria is not in the area of um, it's not in the area of uh, legislation. It's even in the legislators. The legislation we already have, we we don't seem to do that. So definitely not how how much you try to do the legislation. There will always be people that will find means to beat it. Okay, fine. Let's uh, get more insights now. Securitizing the ways and means advances and adding them to the public debt balance will raise the total public debt to about uh, 69 trillion naira, or about the 35 um, percent of the 2022 GDP, uh, from 46.3 trillion naira, or 23 percent. Uh, you know that uh, we had before. You know, uh, what's the implication of this uh, adding this uh, ways and means to our general public debt, really? Well, the implication of it is that you are not owing more debts, <laughs> so we have more debt to pay, and that's the implication. Uh, in, in, in we did an analysis one time of the foreign debts Nigeria is owing, and we realized that every Nigeria is owing fifty is owing the our debt of fifty fifty dollars. So we need to add this to, and we need to convert it to naira and know how much we are owing in terms of naira. Every Nigeria is owing. At before now, it was two hundred naira. Each Nigeria is owing in terms of naira debts. So um, I, I I think um, it's not just um, looking for ways to pay, but how you go about looking for these ways to pay. I mean, if there's any administration that have taken advantage of debt with impunity, is this uh, current administration? They've not looked at debt as a, they've not looked at uh, debt as something that is going to affect the future generation or the incoming administration. They looked at it at one side. Oh, we need debt. We need to finish project that we've started. And most of these projects are physical projects that most of them will not be concluded by them. And most of them are economical variables. If they are giving it to the private sector, like the PPP, most of these private stuff that build and operate for the next 25 years, the government would have had, um, channeled those from maybe to social investment in health and education. But the government that refused to think out of the box, and that is why we have the challenge that we have now. So for me, I think this government that don't think out of the so the easy way out and the easy way out is to borrow money. Okay, another factor supporting the need for a review of debt benchmarks in the fiscal strategy paper is that the share of domestic debt in the overall public debt split will rise to almost 73% compared with around 60% previously. Is this really true? Yeah, it is. And again, most of this 73% uh, yeah, government is the highest debtor. I mean, in any developed economy, you see private companies are one that are highly in debt because they collect this debt to expand their business, and through their business, they're able to service this debt. But what we have seen here in Nigeria is that the government collected debt to pay salary and also to continue to pay salary of political appointees. So definitely the debt profile keep going up and the means of payment gets slimmer by the day. Because the only other means they look at, okay, outside of the put oil, which have subsidy regime and eating deep paid, they could the NPC did not give anything to the federation account. So the next thing they're looking is widening the test the tax bracket. And when they talk about widening the tax brackets, taxing the already tax. So definitely I think um it calls for sign it calls for worry. But debt in itself is not bad. It is being used for productive ventures. Uh, but when you look at debt as a means of uh, 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 allowances and salaries for, for an overblotted civil servant due to political appointee, there's more to worry about now. All right, Mukta, let's look at the flip side because some people still believe there's a bit of an advantage to this. But with the rising debt service to revenue ratio estimated by the World Bank at approximately 96%, in 2022. Some analysts say this move is very good uh, in reducing the federal government's debt service burden. How do you reason all of that? It, 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 it's good in terms of when you look at uh, debt in itself, it's not bad. It's just like any business. Sometimes you need to expand, you go to borrow. But what we are saying, why it's bad in this uh, instant is that some of these debt are borrowed because they cannot meet their salary uh, demands. So especially with the ways and the means, and then they are not able to use this working in synergy between the monetary and, monetary and fiscal side to control inflation. Inflation is more every, every month in every economy in the world, but ours seems to be out of control because we seem to do nothing about it. So definitely, I think um, 
there is there, 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 there is a lot to be concerned about when you look at um, Nigerian debt profile and what we are trying to do. It, it doesn't look workable at all. I just feel for the incoming administration, they need to find a way around and begin to see how they can offset some of these debts and look at those debts that are not productive and get out of it. I right, must say a very big thank you to you, Mukta, for your time and, of course, all the analysis that you have brought and clarity you have made on these uh, ways and means and the implication on Nigeria's uh, fiscal policy. Uh, Mohammed, uh, Mukta Mohammed uh, is an international finance and economic analyst. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be coming back in a moment to we'll look at the, the impact of the CBN's cashless policy vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the new notes in circulation and all of that, how it is in the country and how Nigerians are bearing the brunt in one moment after this quick break. Stay with us.